was a weak ass clap because I'm wearing a glove. <laughs> I spent a number of my minutes cleaning this little table right here. Then I realized you can't even see it because I'm sitting. In Try to make a nice backdrop. We all we can see how well that went. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well. So this is, I guess, a part two of a 100,000 subscriber celebration. This has absolutely nothing to do with the last video I posted, but if you do want to check that out, I'll leave that in the little like card for you. For a while on this channel, I've said I would revive this series, but after we hit 100,000 subscribers, so here we are. <laughs> but you might have noticed the name of the series has changed. Art Dad is dead. R.I.P. Art Dad. I'm okay, just the name. I'm still a dog dad. I'm just not an art dad anymore. <laughs> a little while ago, I made a video on my channel talking about my target audience, my target demographic, and in there I touched on how I didn't really like the name art dad anymore. But also at the same time, I really like the idea and concept for this series. I didn't want to just abandon this because I really like it and you guys really like it, so. But I needed a new name. <laughs> A lot of you guys really like the concept of me being called art something. Popular suggestion was art guy. It's very vague and silly and dumb and I love it. <laughs> but also a suggestion for the series that I really, really liked was pen pal. And I really, really liked that and I was going to make it that. And then someone pointed out that pen paling content is an actual thing on YouTube and also various forms of media. <laughs> and I didn't want to just clog those tags with my art bullshit. So sticking with pencil pals. I also found out on Instagram, pencil pals is a name of a Charlie Brown comic series, but I'm sure he won't mind if we just snatch that name. I really liked that idea because it's like, you guys are like a pen pal or a pencil pal, leaving your characters out on the internet for me. And then this video is like my pen pal response to you guys. Kind of dumb, maybe a little cheesy, but I really liked it. So I also made it pen pals with an S. I could have made it with a Z because we're Cool. I wanted to kind of encourage you guys to give your input about this stuff as well. Of course, this series is a fun way for me to talk about character design and give you guys some tips, but also A, I'm just one person, B, I'm not an expert, and C, to an extent, character design can be kind of subjective. Of course, there are some typical things that you want to keep in mind for character design, but also there are certain aesthetics and design elements that are very subjective to one person, and so through a lot of these, I'm giving you character design tips but also just character design aspects that I love <laughs> but also not everybody loves the same things so I wanted to make it s pals <laughs> to encourage you guys to chime in on this as well you guys can go through the tag on Instagram or even just in the comment section of this video and don't be afraid to like give your thoughts and opinions on this stuff too because we're a community here we love each other we support each other. So that's that's where the name came from, in case you were wondering. <laughs> I've talked for way too much. I'll pull up Instagram and we can get started. For anyone unfamiliar with this series, here are a couple of ground rules for what goes on here. Of course, this takes place on Instagram, so whenever this is going, I'll probably announce it here on YouTube, but the actual event takes place over on Instagram, so just keep an eye out for those. And essentially, if you have an original character of yours that you're struggling with the design a little bit, you will post it to Instagram under the hashtag Dear Pencil Pals. In the caption of that post, you can specify if there's something in particular that you need help with or if you just need help generally. Makes my life a little bit easier if you specify what exactly you're having a hard time with, but if not, it doesn't really matter. Of course, any original character that you enter must be your original character. I also ask that you guys only make one entry. I want to make this as fair as possible for everybody. A lot of people want me to help them with their character, and so if you make multiple posts, then that just makes it a little bit more unfair for my audience as a whole, so you guys have no problem being respectful, just that's another rule. If you don't feel comfortable me making changes to your character or having my art shown in your video, don't post. And lastly, just the disclaimer of don't view this as me making permanent changes to your character because at the end of the day this is your character. I am just here to give some character design advice and I just thought that that would be a really fun way to do this of me just helping you guys. Any changes I do make you are free to keep. If you don't like a change that I make to your character do not feel obligated at all to keep it. I promise I won't be offended. Really I just want you guys to be happy with the characters that you have. So now that that's all out of the way let's should probably actually screen record. I think that'd be helpful. It's been a while since I filmed one of these. <laughs> Here we are. I guess we'll go through the recent tag. This is so cute. I want to look through the tag a little bit more, but I'm gonna keep that in mind. This phase of the video is always the hardest because like, there's a lot of characters in this tag. <laughs> it's so hard for me to pick. Yeah, look, this looks like a fun character. <laughs> 
I think I made this exact joke in a different video. <laughs> this is a fun character. It smells like sweat and disappointment, if that's not the biggest goddamn mood. Stole your drunk dad's aesthetic. <laughs> this is the motion range of a dead fish. Why is this the most relatable character I've ever seen? <laughs> I made the character design a while ago. As you can see, I'm still not satisfying. Yeah, that's what it says. It's just so uninteresting. Anyway, you're welcome to make any changes to this bean, by the way. Love your video, Oliver. Thanks. I will see what I can do. Let's get started. <laughs> Whoa, God. Let's break my tablet while I'm at it. <laughs> Before I even make any changes, I do want to say having a plain character or like a simple character design in itself, like that's not necessarily a bad thing. Honestly, a big part of it depends on A, the character themselves and like their personal aesthetic in the world that they live in and also just your personal taste. That's If you don't like drawing your character, that's an issue. <laughs> but I think there is a big misconception about character design that like if you don't have a lot of details or if you don't have like a super crazy could the color scheme then like it's not a good character design that's not necessarily true your character doesn't need to have like a super crazy color palette or like an intricate or crazy outfit like the main thing about character design that's important i think is identifiability is that a word people being able to look at your character and tell that it's your character just something that makes your character memorable it's not necessarily like intricate details or super out there color schemes and so all of that considered i do think like a more simple outfit color scheme kind of like a muted color palette like you have here I think can actually suit this character a lot because what I've gathered from your post she's given up <laughs> because a character who's given up on a lot of different aspects of their life probably isn't going to pay too much attention to keeping up appearances so I think if that is something we wanted to go with we could just fuck her up a little bit just fuck her up fam <laughs> let's give her kind of like a bored facial expression i think she doesn't really want to be here because she probably doesn't i actually really like the hat i don't know if i'm very good at drawing hats but maybe the brim can kind of hang a little low on her face i really like the old beat up look of the hat i think it adds a lot of personality to her the hat could also have some kind of meaning i don't know this character's whole story obviously but maybe it could be it's all old and beat up so it could be from somebody that she's known for a long time who means a lot to her if you want a little extra angst maybe someone who's dead. Are they a protagonist of any story if someone they care about isn't dead? <laughs> I just realized the hat says lucky girl. I love that. I don't know the meaning behind that. Maybe this is a custom hat and they're saying she's the lucky girl. Could be a brand or something. I don't know. I do think adding little touches like that though does help a lot with world building. Cause like if you think about somebody wearing a hat, it's usually like a sports team or like a popular brand. I know bands have baseball caps, so it could be something like that. I could definitely recommend like coming up with a logo to put on the hat. Whenever a character is supposed to be like kind of disheveled or a little tired or given up on themselves, you know? I really like giving them like really shaggy or messy hair. I do think the shorter hair suits this character a lot, but maybe just giving the hair a little bit more length. Have the hair sticking up everywhere. I think another thing that might be worth playing around with is the fit of the clothing. In the info, it says stole your drunk dad's aesthetic. But I also noticed that she is 5'4", so she's not like super big. I think it would be like, I think it'd be pretty interesting to take the whole stole your drunk dad's aesthetic a little seriously, even if she doesn't have a drunk dad. Like if she did and she stole his clothes, what would that look like? fit on her. I think just like playing around with the fit could really push that aesthetic a little bit more. But also that being said, don't just make everything like super big and baggy on her. I would say have maybe one baggy thing. Usually that takes form in like a sweater or a shirt, but you could also have like baggy pants and then like a tighter fitting shirt. So obviously I went for the baggy sweater route, but in your original drawing her sweater had no head I was gonna say no sleeves. I had short sleeves. I gave her long sleeves. Just a personal preference. Either or could really work, honestly. If you wanted to make the sweater look like old and kind of icky, for lack of a better word, <laughs> you could also just, again, just fuck it up fam like maybe one of the hoodie strings are like kind of like you know how after a while the hoodie strings can get like torn <laughs> and it's like all frayed maybe that's happening over here maybe the bottom of here got all frayed and gross <coughs> 
Let me just choke on my coffee real quick. I'm sure that'll be great for everyone. Oh my god, maybe the sleeve kind of like goes over her hand. That could be another thing. If you wanted to keep like a shorter sleeve, maybe the sleeves on the sweater itself is actually long, but she rolls them up so she can use her hands. And then when they're unrolled, it just completely engulfs her arm. I really like the pants on the first one. I feel like I've more taken inspiration from the second one, but I really like these pants. One time I had a friend, I don't know if they still do this, but at one point they referred to sweatpants as the giving up on life pants. So, that considered, I think it suits this character quite well. I just had the sudden urge to like put a patch or two on her sweater. I don't know why. I think that could help make it look old and very much used. So <laughs> to be honest, if there's anything I have the hardest time designing, it'd be shoes. <laughs> so I feel like I'm always the least helpful when it comes to designing shoes, but of course references are always a good thing to look up. If you wanted your shoes to have a little more spice to them, I'd recommend going to the internet for that. <laughs> oh fuck, I'm on the internet. No! <laughs> I'm really like how the shoes are untied, so I'm gonna slap that on one of these. I actually really like this sort of like muted color palette you have, so I don't think there's honestly too many changes. Well, that's a wrong layer. <laughs> I think it is also worth mentioning that like, if you aren't super happy with a character's color scheme, but it's like, if you feel like it's almost there, but it's like not quite there. I think it'd be worth playing around with the undertones of a certain type of color. Like right here I gave the skin tone and the hair a little bit more of like a reddish undertone and I think that that can help tie them together a little bit more. But I do really like the sort of foresty green color so I really want to add that. I think it goes super nice especially with the browns of the character. I really like the color of the shirt. It's like it Whoops, I just deleted all of the colors. <laughs> Trash the whole thing. Kind of gives me the vibe that at one point it was a nice white shirt or off-white shirt, but now it looks kind of gross and used. I think the general hue is fine. I think it's just, we need to work on the contrast. Let's see, we'll start there. You can also play around with the hair. I totally forgot that that's an option. <laughs> feel the need if the drawstring is gonna be a different color to bring that color somewhere else. I don't really, I'm just kind of fucking around. I'm, I'm just going for it. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I could also just make the hood. There we go. <laughs> I don't know why I love doing this to like hoodies and stuff. Just making different sections of it different colors. I think it can take a fairly like some would say boring article of clothing and just it, it can make it a little bit more interesting. Like look at my shirt. There are stripes on it but each section is a different color of stripe and that's fun and snazzy. And then the shoes I think should either be the same color as the hair or the jacket. I'm leaning towards the hair because the jacket is already like, there's a lot there <laughs> like in the center of it. So I think that's about all the advice I could give for this character. I hope that even if you don't go with this sort of direction, I hope that I was able to say something <laughs> of use. I think you have a really great character here. I think you have like a really solid start to it. I really liked your character. Thank you so much for submitting. Alrighty, let's see what else you guys got for me. Oh my god. Oh, we got a whole cast here. This is the one that you wanted help with. Hadley, I love her. Is that how you say her name? Hadley? Hadley? This girl. I heard about Dear Pencil Pals. I've been waiting for this time because I very much would appreciate some help with my main OC. Hadley? Hadley? Hadley is a powerless adolescent girl in a fantasy world where, where humans all have cool powers that they use to keep society together in their empire. Blah blah. Nice. <laughs> but I haven't quite been able to perfect her design. I've been struggling, especially with her clothing. I want to reflect a lower class status, but I still want it to have like, I don't know, traditional meets anime vibes. <laughs> Genshin Impact meets medieval meets Lolita. <laughs> I don't even know myself. All I know is I like her hair. It's super difficult to explain the vibes, but I included my other characters so you can kind of see. I do think I see the vibe you're going for. All right, let, let's get to it. I do definitely think you're on the right track with this character. I think you have a really solid base and a really fun silhouette. I I think the main thing I'm saying is that the clothing that she's wearing, like the vibe doesn't quite fit with the rest of the characters. As a character that's standing on its own, I think it could be a pretty cool character design, but the main issue here is just the fitting in with the rest of the characters. If your character is supposed to represent more of like a lower class part of the world, they don't need to match the rest of the characters a lot, but I do think that there are some things that should be done to help tie your character in with the rest of the characters in the world. You said you liked the hair, so I'm not I'm gonna make like no changes to that. 
We've got this hair piece. I think that this is a really cool detail. I think it'd be a really cool idea to try and incorporate that into other parts of the design. I think some changes to the cloak should be made. And already I think I see an opportunity to incorporate that hair detail thingy. You know how there's usually like a tie or like a button right here to help keep the cloak together? I think we could use that to do that. We could also give her a hood. I don't know. I feel like cloaks tend to have hoods. You don't have to have one, but I'm also getting the urge to add some sort of like, instead of making it just a flat edge, something like this. I noticed that for, with your other characters, there are some of them that also have cloaks. If she is supposed to be like the protagonist of the story or something, I think that that can help set her apart from the other character of the story while still having her like ha fit. In your sort of character description, you mentioned medieval. I don't know a whole lot about Lolita fashion, but I know a little bit. And I know nothing about Genshin Impact, so I can't help you with that. <laughs> I noticed that in your character, it looks like either a shirt and a skirt or like a dress with a shirt over it. I noticed that dresses are a lot more common in both medieval fashion and Lolita fashion. So if that is the sort of aesthetic that you want to give, maybe that's a change worth considering. And then I also noticed that within like the medieval, dare I say, peasanty type of clothing, long sleeves are also a little common. Lolita fashion, it's pretty 50-50, but I feel like in medieval fashion, longer sleeves are more common. But if you did want to keep the short sleeves, I kind of am vibing with giving her gloves and then making the edge of the glove kind of like the same shape as the bottom of the cloak to help bring that shape throughout the design a little bit. And then you can keep like short sleeves and then that'll help balance out the stuff. I'm very great at explaining things. It'll balance out the stuff. <laughs> I really like the general style of the clothing. Give her some puffy sleeves. I think that'd be fun. What if we gave her like, I don't, I'm just gonna draw it because I don't really know how to explain it. <laughs> I'm out of coffee. This is a sad day. But what I was thinking is we'll have like this sort of like slip thing over the dress. I was thinking it could either be like almost as long or it could be much shorter. I know that corsets can be kind of popular. So this is like something that mimics the vibe of a corset, but kind of acts as an apron, I guess. I think it could kind of help those two vibes go together. Of course, you'd have to play around with like the exact shape and cut of it, but there's a thing to consider. I have thought of making it like a button down dress, like a button down all on the front. But if this shape is here, I don't know if I really like that. So we could just have like buttons around the collar. I had a stripe on the hem of the skirt. I don't know if I love that a lot. I guess for now we can keep it. I kind of want to match the shoes with the gloves. What are those shoes called? Mary Jane's, which is also the weed. So why are they called that? <laughs> what came first, the shoes or the drug nickname? Google the answer and leave it in the comments down below. <laughs> but what if instead of matching the shoes we made, you matched the gloves with the socks? So this could go one of two ways. It could go like that or it could go like that. I'm gonna go with this one, but honestly, both can work. <laughs> I went to go, I forgot I ran out of coffee. <laughs> I just looked that picture. I didn't mean to do that. Now you might have suspicions that you've been picked. I mean, suspicions is correct but I think one thing that could benefit this character just throwing another color in there I guess it's like looking at your other characters there's one that has a lot of purple there's one that has a lot of red which definitely makes them compete a little bit more with this color this color this character <laughs> so I'd say like throw in one more co 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 color color <laughs> that can be like an accent color. Because of the other characters in this, it can be kind of hard to pick a single color that'll make her stand out and not compete too much with the other characters, but also characters can share color schemes. I guess it just depends on the characters and if there's a purpose for it. I noticed that her eyes are green, so maybe her color scheme can be like a mix of green and yellow because of like the hairpiece thing. And then the browns can be accents or it could be mostly brown with, and then just add a little bit more green and yellow throughout the entire color scheme. My camera is dying. I I don't know if I'm gonna finish this before it dies, but <laughs> I do like brown for the cloak. Maybe just play with the saturation of it. I really like having the skirt be not quite white. Kind of want to add more yellow to the cloak too. Can add that detail. Oh, ooh, ooh, hell yeah. All right, now let's play around with this dress color. There we go. It still has like that warm yellowish undertone, but it's the less disgusting color. Right now my instinct is to make the gloves and also the socks the same color. Mm, I don't know if I love that. What if I made them white? I don't know if I love that either. For now, we'll go with it. Ah! 
My camera died! I said earlier that there should be more green in this design, and I still stand by that, but I don't know exactly where. Honestly, brown kind of works, but we should play around with the exact hue. We'll take this brown and throw it up here. I love making different colored seams. I have no idea why. <laughs> and then we should probably make the shoes that same color. So for the eyes, currently they're green. I guess you could leave them green. It's not a bad choice, but I kind of want to see what they'd look like if they were like a golden color. Or we could make them like, like a very orangey brown or just dark brown. I don't know how set you were on having the eyes green. I do think that playing around with the eye color could, there could be some benefit to it, even if you don't go with that. Completely forgot about this stripe here. I, I hope I gave something of use. <laughs> I think that this is a really fun character. I think you're definitely headed in the right direction. I hope I was able to help you capture the aesthetic you were going for a little bit more. Keep up the good work. I, I went to look in the camera and I realized it's not there, but <laughs> thank you for submitting your character. I think we should just keep working our way up and then once we get to the top we'll see how many we're at. I think I usually do like six or seven. It really just depends on time, to be honest. <gasps> That's so fun. We have Pokemon, we have Pokemon, as I'm sure you all know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying that like it's anything new. <laughs> this could be fun. Here's my OC May. She's a teenager, haven't figured out her age. Extroverted, doesn't really have a preference clothing wise. She doesn't have much of a story or anything, but I'm having trouble designing her main outfit. I think I could possibly help. Let's see. I like how I'm just Oh my god, a cat. I'm just processing that there's a cat here. I like your cat. <laughs> I think immediately right off the bat, the first tip I'm going to give. You said she doesn't have a preference of a clothing style. I would suggest finding at least like a general preference. I think it makes a character a lot more identifiable and a lot more individual when they have a specific aesthetic in mind. Because I noticed like the first two slides, they have more of like a similar clothing style between them and then the next one is a lot more edgy. Like since you provided three outfits and the first two have a similar vibe going on, I'm going to focus on that. Of course there are characters that can have different aesthetics going on and then also as a character ages their aesthetic can change with them. So maybe like between the two different aesthetics you've drawn her in, one can be the younger version of her and another one can be the older version of her. Generally when I give tips on like designing a character's outfits and stuff I always say to look at the story that they're in and this character doesn't have a story. Which is totally fine, like I'm like that too, or I just have characters that simply exist and they aren't a part of any universe that I have. That can definitely make it a little bit more difficult to design clothing for them. That arm is for sure too long, right? I think it's like a noodle arm. I really like the hair, so I don't think I'm gonna change that much, if at all. You did say you were having a hard time designing her main outfit. I'm not quite sure which one her main outfit is. I'm going to assume it's the one that's colored. That eye's a weird shape. How do I make an eye? look like an eyeball and not like a pile of shit. So with the three outfits that you've given, the first two are fairly similar in aesthetic and then the last one is like the edgy emo phase. So <laughs> what I would suggest, either change the final outfit to sort of match the aesthetic that the other two have or we can change her main outfit to kind of incorporate elements of that other outfit so then that way it doesn't seem like such a hard left turn. Let's see, where would her head be? Hopefully above her shoulders. I'm kind of just gonna bounce around a lot between all three images just so I can incorporate enough elements from each of them. Her hair is two different tones of blue and then in this other image there's a lot of like greens and then a lot of reds in her outfit. I would suggest knocking one of those colors just to help make the color scheme a little more cohesive at least for this main outfit. Debating if I want to draw her in a bow or a tie. I'll come back to that decision later. I guess it doesn't really matter but... <laughs> I'm going to pretend like it does. I really like the thick belt she has, with the corsety type thing. I'll bring that over. I also find that if you're struggling with a character's like main sort of outfit, just tweaking the little details and playing around with like specific elements 
could make a difference. If you look at like the vest she's wearing, like the top part is like low cut, could play around with like, okay, well, if she is wearing a vest, like how would the cut be? How would she look if it was like, if the cut was higher up or if it was like in the middle part? I don't know if that made sense, but I think you know what I mean. She has like kind of like a uh, knee length skirt in one of the outfits. She has pants in the other and then like a shorter skirt. Oh, I just exited out of the thing. And then a shorter skirt in the other. <laughs> I just had an idea of like, what if in her main outfit, she has like a shorter skirt, but then has like the, what are they called? Tight things, like the spandex short things underneath. Cause it, it can be like, sometimes she wears pants, sometimes she doesn't, who knows? I also want to make the vest like a little bit longer. I'm not satisfied with how all this looks. Let me just draw this as if that wasn't there and then I'll add it on. I think also deciding an age for her could help pick like what her clothing would look like. It's like with the way I've drawn her here, she looks a little bit younger than her how you drew her, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just, again, it really depends on what her actual age would be. So I think deciding that would also benefit her design. So you know, like how old or how young to make her look. Yeah, I just noticed these aren't short sleeves. They're like long sleeves. <laughs> Dang, I'm a fool. In all three of them, they do have her arms covered. So maybe that could be something. Maybe she doesn't like short sleeves. Just something to be a little consistent throughout all of her outfits. Like for example, my character Arietta, she never wears pants, mostly wears skirts, occasionally shorts, but she doesn't like pants. So none of her outfits have pants. It could be something like that. Maybe this character doesn't like short sleeves or at least like she likes to have her arms covered in some way. Let's see, what do I like better? We've got a bow or or a tie. Honestly, I think they both work as well as each other. <laughs> Let's go with this. Honestly, I've gotten very used to the belt not being there. I don't know how set you are on having like the corset belt thing. I think another thing I'm gonna try and do, I didn't notice that those were long sleeves. They kind of read as like two different shirts, I guess, which can definitely work, but I guess it just depends on personal preference. For now, I'm going to try and make it look like they're a part of the same shirt. I have two different ideas. One, make the sleeves flowy to draw the cuff. So I'm gonna do one on each hand and then I'll make a decision. I think for the sake of this outfit, the sleeve with the cuff works better, but that baggy sleeve is something you can play around with on your own time. Maybe something you can incorporate in another outfit of hers or maybe even this one. I don't know, it's your character. And then also if you wanted to keep the corset or belt, I've been calling it both. <laughs> if you wanted to keep that element, you could match the boots to it, which is actually fashion advice that's given in the real world. Match your shoes to your belt. I don't know, it does something for the clothes that you wear. <laughs> Whenever I draw taller shoes like this, I always like to draw them here and then make like socks just peeking out the top. Definitely gonna go for a smaller belt here. Kinda like it if this is like hanging down. What I have in mind, I'll make most of that red. We'll hop over to white. I think it's part of the sleeve white. Stripe white. You know, we can even add a thinner stripe on top. And then I wanted the shirt collar to be white. What I also imagine, like assuming we went with like the ribbon tie instead of like a necktie. Don't mind me just making last minute changes. <laughs> I think we can make the buttons red. We can make it like a cooler red. That looks pretty cool, literally. What if we made that like lighter? So it's like almost white. Let's see how cool or warm should the brown be? Since there's the both the blue and the red, you can kind of go either way. I think both would look just as fine as the other. Whoops, let's not make a new canvas. Oh, let's not move all the colors. <laughs> I think that's about all the help I can offer. The main things I would offer to you, settle on a specific aesthetic and then pick an age. Cause those are two things that could definitely really affect the design of her main outfit. I think you're definitely headed in the right direction. Hopefully I said anything that could help give you that final push. Thank you for submitting. I've now updated Toys Coffee. Let's see what else you guys got for me. <laughs> That's cool. Oh my god, speed paint. This is the one that I was looking at earlier, right? And then I was like, maybe we'll come back to it. I think we'll come back to it. <laughs> this is Skylar. She's cold and a bit edgy, but honestly a sweetheart. I'm having trouble with her colors mostly. I want her design to be a bit more colorful and have more contrast, but I don't know how. Besides her lower part is a bit lacking compared to the top part, I think. I, I really like this character so far. Let's see if I can help you with the things you want help with. Right off the bat, the one thing I wanna say is that the bottom half of your 
character is lacking compared to the top half of your character in itself isn't necessarily a bad thing i think it mostly just depends on is there anything to be gained from your character by adding a little bit more detail to the bottom part because if you have a super intricate like shirt on a character let's say sometimes adding detail to bottom half of their outfit can actually it can make your character seem a little bit more busy so having like a more plain looking outfit i guess you could say on the bottom half of a character isn't a bad thing it just all depends on how the upper part of your character looks i think the general color scheme the general silhouette i think it's all very fun and very interesting so i think it's more of just tweaking what you do have rather than making super drastic changes and i actually really like the general hair shape so i think what i'm gonna try and do here i'm gonna try and incorporate that sort of earring detail a little bit more because i think it's a really fun shape so i think right now i might try and add like a little hair tie or hair ribbon with that in it or another thing that you could do you could give her like kind of like a handkerchief handkerchief but like a necktie i would recommend doing one or the other i don't i'm not sure how well both the tie around the neck and in the hair would look together i think i like the one around the neck so i'm gonna delete the hair bow but some things to keep in mind I don't know if it's just this character or just this drawing or if it's something that's a part of your art style but there is a lot of like triangular shapes and just a lot of angular shapes in general. Of course shape language is a very big part of character design. Triangles are oftentimes used <laughs> for villains but not always. They can also just be like very sharp and cunning characters. I don't know a whole lot about this character but if triangles are a shape that really suit your character incorporate more of that. Like, I just incorporated the triangle shape because I thought it looked cool. <laughs> if you look into more of like shape language and learn more about that, if that's not something that suits your character, maybe changing the shape to like a different thing, like maybe like changing the triangle detail to a more like circular shape. Like let's say you're drawing a jacket because that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> like if I draw the same jacket over and over again, but use different shapes in the way that I draw that jacket, each jacket, even if visually the style and like the color and everything is the same, it'll still feel different because our minds just pick up different feelings and emotions when it comes to like shapes so i think i actually want to crop the jacket a little bit i'm getting an urge to do that i think i might actually angle them like this too to help carry that triangle shape i really like the rolled up sleeves where the long sleeves peeking out underneath also add another thing to the collar i think i'm going to tuck the shirt into the skirt just because i think it would help with the silhouette i really like the shape of the jacket too it does have the jacket the skirt <laughs> it does have those like triangle shapes that I keep trying to incorporate if you didn't want this exact style another thing you could do one thing that i've actually been drawing a lot <laughs> just in my own stuff a pleated skirt but not like an entirely pleated skirt so something like that for this character i do like that. If you did like the other shape, that could be another thing for you to play around with. I don't know what material. It looks kind of like it's supposed to be like a denim skirt, but purple. I'm also getting a urge to rip her tights. Probably because you said that she's edgy. I also want to make a thick seam down the side. You can also, if you wanted to make it even more edgy, <laughs> you could add like some frayed bits at the edge of the skirt. And I'm going to add like slightly tall socks because one thing I noticed, you do have like slight touches of red here and there, like with the earring detail. Like how I said you should add that shape throughout the thing a little bit more, that would include adding more red throughout the rest of the design. Red can definitely very much just be an accent color and honestly I'd recommend that, but I think you could stand to add just a little bit more throughout the design. And I'm to be real i have no idea what to do with shoes <laughs> i feel like i can draw shoes fairly well once i put some effort into it designing them it's a whole other ball game a ball game that i don't think i'm very good at <laughs> you know how with i think specifically doc martens but also like other shoes they have that like loop thing in the back i don't know what they're actually meant for but i use them to like help me pull my shoe on my foot maybe you could like exaggerate those a little bit maybe make them like a bit larger and ex accentuate them because they kind of fit in with that like triangle detail. I think I might actually want to make them. Let me get rid of these. Yoink! I think I want to make them a bit larger. <laughs> Looks like she's dancing. <laughs> you said you wanted the colors to be a bit more colorful. There's kind of a lot of ways you can do that. Honestly, just bump up the saturation on all of your colors and then tweak 
each individual color from there. So off the bat, I think I'm going to make her hair a lot brighter. I think the general color placement that you have going on is pretty good. The two main things I would suggest to you is saturation and contrast. You guys want to see how I make tight colors? Color it in the skin color. Fill that in. Multiply. Play around with the opacity. And then I merge. And then of course, playing with like how you shade them and whatnot. That'll make them look more tight effect with ripped tights. There tends to be some of this action. I kind of like this more muted, desaturated purple. And I generally like the shirt too, to be honest. To add like the brightness and the colorfulness, I would probably just play around with the blue tones and the red tones. And then I would suggest keeping the purples a little bit more muted. I'm still not sure how much I'm digging that hair color. Actually, let me just get rid of the hair. Kind of curious to see how that would look as the jacket color. And now we're back to the hair. Blocking around random color and then we'll adjust it and see what looks good. Actually before I adjust the hair, I think I'll add in the red tones. There could also be some sort of like pattern. Maybe she has like some sort of embroidery or like a pin. Actually, I think what I'll also do, I think I'll shift the hues of the purples slightly, make them a bit more red. I kind of have the urge to make the shoelaces red too. Let me know what you think of what I've done with her. I think you have a really cool character on your hands. I hope that I was able to help you get into the direction you want her to be in. I hope that you enjoyed her and thank you so much for sharing your character with me. Yes, I- this is a different shirt. Don't- don't even worry about it. Just don't- just- Oh, wait. I should probably plug my microphone in, huh? Professional man! No, 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 no. Fucking god damn it! Hello? Ah, I am the most professional professional to have ever professional. I think I have time for two more. I wanna try and pick a dude or a non-binary person because all of them so far have been girls. <laughs> oh no, we'll ignore that for now. Ooh, this looks like a fun thing to work with. I was drawing in my sketchbook because digital don't work well for me that day. I wasn't hoping for anything too great but this came out and I put it out there digital. I'm not exactly proud of the coloring. Still think his design is a bit cluttered and the colors don't fit right but I really love his character because he's got them problems. That's a mood. <laughs> There's a lot of fun elements to this character, so I'm very excited to play around with these. I definitely agree that his design is a little cluttered. The way that I typically go about handling more cluttered designs, I look at the aspects that I personally either most like or think suit the character more. If there's anything I think is either out of place or unnecessary for the character, I get rid of it. I don't know a lot about this character. He seem to have some sort of magical power, which I can see if incorporated into the design, which is definitely what you want to do, so. I'm gonna draw a pose as if he's using his magical powers, but I don't know if I'm actually gonna draw the magic stuff, because lazy. <laughs> if I have to guess stuff about him, just based off of the way you've drawn him, I would say he seems somewhat high status, maybe not necessarily royalty, but also a little bit like on the colder side in terms of personality, kind of like a stone cold bitch. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting, which I love those characters. <laughs> I always love the insensitive assholes. I don't know why. I don't know what that says about me. I gave him a little bit of like a longer face just because I think personality wise that suits how I've read him. I think playing around with the size of the glasses can be really fun because you have like kind of larger round glasses which could definitely work but I think I'm gonna opt for some smaller ones. I still want to keep like that circle shape. A sort of evil librarian look would really suit him. <laughs> and then I think by giving him those small smaller glasses. The sort of pattern that's on his face could be a little bit more prominent. If you wanted to keep that sort of pattern on his face or like that marking, I would also recommend playing around with like different patterns and different layouts of that marking. Obviously the face is a very defining feature of a character and even just people in real life. So if there's anything on that face, that's one of the things that's immediately going to be associated with your character. So I would really recommend playing around with like more specific shapes of that. Another thing you could do, you could also have it like extend throughout the rest of the skull. If you were to have the facial marking extend kind of in the hairline, I think that gives you an opportunity to play around with some different hairstyles. Because if we're assuming that it does extend past his hairline, Line, there probably wouldn't be hair there. I think for now, I'm going to draw hair on both sides of his head. Just realized I put a part in his hair. You just didn't look like he had a part. Well, old habits die hard, I guess. I think I do want to play around with like some hairstyles and like having his hair tied back just because he has that sort of like elegant, kind of regal look. I can have his hair 
kind of tied together loosely. I think I have to draw the rest of him before I can play around with the back of his hair, so let's do that. I really like that sort of gemstone-y thing on his cloak. I feel like a lot of tips I've given in this video is to like incorporate elements like that <laughs> throughout the character more. Like one thing I'm thinking is like adding it to the hair somehow, like making that like a part of the hair tie. I actually think I'm gonna not go with the bow. And the hair it's fine because it's just it's, it's back there. <laughs> but in terms of being in the front I think the gemstone itself should be a more prominent feature rather than the actual bow. I really like the general base of the outfit underneath the cloak. If you do have the cloak though I would recommend getting rid of the piece of cloth that's going around his waist just because I think that would help get rid of the more cluttered look. If he didn't have the cloak on I think that would be a really cool idea to add but I really like that button detail. I'll make the, f the theme the seam a little bit s <laughs> a little bit thicker not sicker my god can my brain function today I'm not sure if I love that what if I just added seams right here and added the buttons we can continue that seam down the front of his pants too I don't really love the shape of the shirt I gave him I don't love that either but we'll keep it for now I notice that the pants are cuffed I kind of want to bring that button detail that I added up here down to like the cuff area just to help bring that yellow color throughout the design a little bit more add the gemstone detail to the belt also since this belt isn't like a regular belt you could really play around of like different shapes of like the part where it actually buckles together. Still not super satisfied with the shape of this shirt, but I don't know how to fix it. I have a specific shirt in mind, but I don't know what it's called or how it looks. I just, I have a picture in my mind that I cannot put down to paper. <laughs> but I also want to make the sleeves like puffier. Like somewhere between pirate and vampire is like what I'm picturing. I don't know what that style of shirt is called. <laughs> Honestly that hand isn't even drawn well but we'll accept it. I noticed that he has like long dangly earrings which definitely can work but I wouldn't recommend making them moons just because that's one more element that is thrown into the design. Definitely play around with what that would be. I would just avoid adding any more sort of elements to avoid the design from looking too busy. I think a part of what's making the design look a bit more cluttered is the cloak itself. The actual like detail pattern that's on it. I think there's just a bit too much going on. Okay, it's really bothering me not knowing what the shirt is. Let me look a pirate shirt and see what happens. Pirate shit. <laughs> Let's not look that up. Ooh, 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 ooh. Can add like a separate chain or something. Maybe something that matches the necklace. Could make the gemstone thing part of his shirt. Like if he were wearing like some sort of neck accessory, like a ribbon or a tie or something attached to his vampire slash pirate shirt. I want to add that gemstone and ribbon detail down here too. And then in terms of color placement, honestly, I think a big part of the reason why they felt off is just because of the clutteredness of the design. I think once you start simplifying things a little bit more, I think the color placement will come a lot more naturally and it'll feel a lot cleaner. I think I want to keep the pants black. It's a nice way to break up the colors of the rest of the outfit. I kind of picture the shoes also being black. I think I could make them the same tone as the pants as long as I... Because like where the pants are cuffed, since that's the inside of the pants, they should be a bit lighter in color anyway. So having that there can help break up these colors and separate them a little bit. That's acceptable, I think. I wonder if I should try and bring that throughout somewhere else. We could make it a seam. I think that's an acceptable look. I think for the marking on the face, I'm gonna go for this somewhat purplish blue. Let's up the saturation and make it darker. Let me decide on a shirt color really quick. I think I do want it to be like, if not white, then almost white. I want it to be a lot brighter. I think actually I'll leave it there. I definitely think the general color placement you had was pretty good. I think it was just the general design that was making it seem a lot more busy and cluttered, but I hope I was able to help you out a little bit. I hope I helped you simplify it and declutter it in the way that you were hoping. Thank you so much for sharing your character with me. Hope you enjoy. So we got time for one more. We will see what we can do. What's a good one? to end on. This person drew a picture of them crying, asking for my help, so <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Hi, Oliver, this is Glenn.
Shokubutsu. I don't know how to say that. I pro I'm, if I butchered that, I am so sorry. <laughs> he runs a plant nursery slash bits and bobs store, and he's pretty much just a stressed plant mom. He's full Japanese, but doesn't know how to speak it, lol. Having a hard time deciding what to do with his hair, and also what his outfit should be. Please help me, I don't want to abandon him. A lot of crying. Also, congrats on 100,000. Thank you. <laughs> I will see what I can do for this boy. I almost just burped while I was saying that. Let's not do that. <laughs> Oh, and I burped. There it is. I kind of am very curious about his bits and bobs shop because I think that that could also play into his outfit depending on like what he sells there. I mean, if it's a bits and bobs shop, I'm assuming it's just random shit. <laughs> but even so, there's a particular part about his shop that he likes or something that he most commonly sells that could be something to integrate. Don't like any of this. <laughs> I definitely like the apron thing he has on. I think it suits his profession of being being a stressed plant mom and owner of a shop. <laughs> I really like the sort of messier shaggy hair. You have two different slides. One of them, the hair's a little bit longer and somewhat more disheveled. And then the other one, it's a little bit shorter and a bit more clean cut. I think the messier one can suit him more because if he's stressed, his hair might not look the most put together. <laughs> kind of want to add some slight bags under his eyes because stress. <laughs> but also I want to be careful about it. I don't know how old this character is supposed to be. I get the vibe that he's rather young. Like nothing older than like mid-20s. At least that's the vibe I get. And if you add too many wrinkles on the face it can really age up the character. But maybe there's something else I can do to make him look younger. <laughs> like maybe I could round the cheeks out a bit more. I think for the sake of this drawing, I'm not going to draw him with the hat just so then that way I could really focus on getting a design for the hair down. If he is like a plant lover and if he likes to garden and stuff, he might. I don't want to say like make him look dirty because that sounds like he doesn't take care of himself. Maybe he doesn't, I don't know. <laughs> but when I think of someone who likes gardening and stuff, I think of someone who isn't really afraid to get messy. So maybe he has like a band on his face where he got cut or maybe he has like dirt or mud stains like on his apron or on his pants or something just something to show that it's like he doesn't care if he makes himself messy if it's for the sake of plants <laughs> i noticed he drew him with round glasses i do like the glasses I don't know why, what I was about to say. I do like the glasses, but a part of me wonders if more square frames would suit him better. So we could do that, or we could go. I don't like how my glasses are, where they're like thick all around. I think I like these ones though. I really like the idea of him having like a tiny ponytail. Not like his hair is styled to be put in a ponytail, but just he'll do it to help keep his hair back when he's gardening. I mean, I drew him with really shaggy bangs, so <laughs> I don't know how practical that is, but maybe he pins his bangs back to every now and again. I don't know. But since he does seem like that more hands-on type of character, I feel like he would see it as being more practical. I, I like how I was struggling with that ear shape so much. The look of what's left of the ear. <laughs> we could either put it up here or we could give him a lower ponytail or something like right in the middle of his head. Of course, if you do go this route, I would also recommend playing with what his hair looks like down. What if I made it stick out a little bit more? Because if you have like short hair, your ponytail probably isn't going to like go how it would. Wait, like that. <laughs> it wouldn't go like that. <laughs> the other thing that I just thought of, you could play around with like the shape of the the shape of that. <laughs> Since he is a plant lover, maybe there's like a specific flower because flowers have different types of meanings depending on what it is. You could look at that, look at different types of flowers and maybe make the ponytail mimic the shape of that. That could be a fun little character design detail. I don't know a whole lot about this character, but there's a ton of flowers out there with a ton of different meanings. I don't have the time to do that right now, but maybe that's something that would be worth a little worth a looking into with the way I'm thinking. He seems like a very hands-on type of person, a very work-oriented person. Basically, I'm thinking of what would make his job a little easier. That's why I'm making decisions like the looser collar and the ponytail, even though he has the shaggy bangs, but we can ignore that. <laughs> I just like shaggy bangs. <laughs> I have a problem. I do like the short sleeves, but you know how people will say like, roll up your sleeves and get to work. We could take that a little literally and like make the shirt itself have long sleeves, but they're rolled up. So it's like, he's getting ready for work. The way you do his apron, it's just above the knees. I'm gonna go for just below the knees, just cause I think that can, not necessarily a better silhouette, but just a different silhouette. This hand, they 
they've just gotten worse throughout the length of this video. Whenever there's something like tied in the back, like some sort of bow, I really like exaggerating the bigness. I think it's just a, f a mix for a lot of fun shapes. So I'm going to make this tie in the back super large. I really like the multiple pockets on the apron. Ooh, I just got some ideas. I don't know how big this character is supposed to be, but an idea that I got. What if the apron, like the tie that goes around the neck, what if it's like too big? <laughs> and so he has to like tie it around multiple times so it could either like crisscross in the front or what I wanted to do. We could like tie it in the front so it's like a little bow. And that way it's kind of like, like some of the other characters I've drawn, they've had like a little ribbon tied around their neck. It kind of mimics that effect, but it's just because the apron doesn't fit right. You could also play around with like the shape of these parts, like you could make it more rounded and even down here too. I don't know the name of his shop. Maybe there's like a name tag or like an embroidered logo of his shop, like right here or something. I guess for now I'll just draw like a little oval thing. But what if he has like gardening gloves like sticking out and they could be all like muddy and dirty and gross. I don't think that hand looks good, but have any of these hands looked good? <laughs> I think I'm also going to cuff the pants. Maybe he's bisexual. I don't know. I can't imagine him wearing anything other than like sneakers. I think I'm gonna go for some low top shoes. Expose that scandalous ankle. <laughs> I want to make them untied. He's probably just like, I got plan, I got plans I got to take care of. I got bits and bops to sell. I don't got time to tie my shoes. I think generally you have some good colors here. I think the only thing I would recommend is to limit it a little bit. Mostly with like the shirt. You have the blue hat and then some blue on the shirt collar. Since I got rid of the hat, I'm probably just gonna get rid of blue altogether. But like yellows, greens, and then like browns, I think really suit this character. For his hair, I wanna go for, I'm thinking a brown, but like a super saturated brown to the point where it's almost black. My camera's dying. Do you think I'll, do you think I'll make it? Do you think I could finish this? Looking at your original color scheme, the pants and the apron are a little too similar in color for my personal taste, so I have the brims of the glasses here green just because that's the color I used to sketch with, but honestly, I'm kind of digging the green brims. Let's just say they're converse because my shoe knowledge is very limited. <laughs> what if we have, the, like we could have the green like on the apron, on like the seams and everything. Can you tell I like making the seams of clothing different colors? <laughs> well, this is what I came up with. I hope that you like it. Don't abandon your character. I think you have a really cool start to a character. Just put a little bit more work in and I'm sure you will love him. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me play around with your character and I hope you enjoy. And there we have it. Oh, those are all of your characters that I'm going to be working on today. I'm gonna try and make this very brief because my camera is still dying. <laughs> so I realized during filming this that it's been 10 months since the last time I made one of these, so... Yeah, definitely the next one won't be as long of a wait now that I have the whole rebranding thing out of the way. I'm definitely going to be making these more often. But also that said, don't expect these to be like a regular monthly thing because these do take a lot of time to film and a lot of time to edit. It takes a lot of prep time to make sure you guys can post your characters on time. I can't make these videos as often as you guys want me to, but I can say it won't be 10 months until the next one. I have no idea when the next one is going to be. In a few months, maybe like three months or something, give myself a break from this one. And for those of you who I didn't choose in this video, I hope that you were still able to get something from this video, even if I wasn't talking about your character specifically and giving you specific examples. I hope that I was able to give... Okay, well, my, my, my camera's dead now, so guess I'm gonna make the rest of this outro in stills. I hope that I was still able to give some general character design tips that could help you push your character in the direction that you want them to go. I, th I think that's it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And also if you have your own character design advice, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And if you are new here, hello. My name is Oliver. I post a lot of art on this channel, as you probably have guessed. <laughs> Since we very unexpectedly hit 100,000 subscribers, the videos I had planned for the end of this month are getting pushed to the beginning of next month. Those are some fun videos, so if you're excited to see those, consider subscribing and sticking around. I would love to share that stuff with you. And if you want to see more from me, feel free to follow me on social media, which will be on screen now and linked in the description box below. Of course, I host stuff like this on Instagram, but other than that, that's just generally where I post my art. And I'm more active. I'd recommend following me there. And if you want to watch more of my videos, those will be on screen now and linked in the iCard for you to check out. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye!